Hey everybody, it's Rain. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about the electric eel wheel nano it is made by dreaming robots the owner of the company is maurice ribble he's very helpful if you have any problems with your wheel or missing any parts or something like that you shoot him an email and he'll make it right this wheel retails for 110 dollars on the dreaming robots website and with that package you get the spinner six bobbins, the wall power supply, the USB cord, the orifice reducer, an orifice hook, and a spin card to help you measure your yarn, which is absolutely helpful. Here's what your box looks like. Now I've had mine for a while. I actually got the 1.0 motor and ended up buying the 1.1 motor upgrade, and I'm absolutely happy that I did. This is what it looks like. Here is the old 1.0 motor. It is no longer available, the 1.0, so you don't have to worry about it if you're thinking about buying this, but I will show you the difference. There's the business card for Dreaming Robots, and here it is. It's quite small as you can see, but it is wonderful. This is the drive band, and as you can see those two screws right there, if you do have the old 1.0 motor and you want to upgrade it, you have to drill the new holes out. This is what the 1.1 motor looks like. It has a black base down where the wires are connected to it. And here is the 1.0 motor next to it. The 1.0 motor has a white base and is a little bit bigger than the other motor. All you have to do is drill two holes where the screws will fit because the holes on the new 1.1 motor are slightly further apart than the 1.0 motor. You don't even have to drill new holes, you just have to make the ones that are there bigger so that they'll fit through. I like to use shelf liner so that my wheel doesn't go flying around while I'm trying to pull yarn off of it. Here's where your orifice hook sits. It is conveniently held there with two magnets. Right there. Love that about it. This is the drive band. That is what moves your flyer to pull your yarn on and spin it. Just like that. Here's your orifice reducer. It comes already inside of it and you can take it out like so. I tend to leave mine in because this wheel I enjoy spinning very fine on. Like, I like to go below fingering, but I absolutely love spinning fingering on this wheel. Here are your yarn guides. You can also get some 3D printed style ones on Etsy, and they say it helps you spin a little bit thicker yarns on there. I've never used them though. To take your flyer off, you want to take your drive band off like so, and also remove your tension band at the back and just pull straight up. There is a washer at the back that sits behind your bobbin. You're going to take that off and then your bobbin will slide right off like so. And there's your flyer. Now the bobbins, let's take a closer look at those. They pop right off like so. Now some people have a problem with putting them on backwards. The way I remember it, you just look on the inside and there's a little groove and a number on the inside part. I don't know if you can see it. Right there, there's like a number one and then a little groove, and there's nothing on the outside of the other side. So you always want to put the groove and the number part on the inside. And make sure that it is pushed all the way on, nice and tight. And there's a little notch on the outside, right there. That's where your tension band sits at. It's on each side. So that way you can put your bobbins on either way. For my leader yarn, I like to stick a little piece of tape down to hold the end to the bobbin. Or you can stick it under the lip and put your end of your bobbin back on over top of it. Either way is fine. They work great either way. Slide your bobbin back on. Then your washer. I like to keep a little tiny piece of shelf liner down in each groove where the flywheel sit at. It just holds it a little more steady but it's not necessary. 
and your both of your silver flywheels go into those grooves. Your drive band, my drive band has came off of my little um, motor attachment down here. So you want to make sure that the rubber drive band is in that groove and then pull it up and it sits in the black notch on your flyer right in there. So it can move the flyer and turn your wheel to pull your yarn off. Just like so. Make sure it's on that little knob at the bottom. Then your tension band goes into the groove at the back of your bobbin like I showed you. Here is your power input, your Z and S twist. The middle is off, left is Z twist, and right is S twist. And here is your speed control knob. I'm going to plug it in. It has a little red indicator light when it's plugged in and getting power. When you plug it in, it will turn red. Make sure everything is off and plug it in. I like to keep my yarn guide level with the orifice hole right there where the yarn comes out. I find it spins a little smoother that way. And then here is how they go on. You go under that loop and then under the loop and in through the hook like so. And pull it over your orifice hole there and use your little orifice hook. Thread your yarn through the orifice reducer and out the front of the wheel. Just like so. Now, here is a very important tip. This is how I do my tension. You just want to take it out of the notch, let it flop, just like that. Absolutely no pulling. Just let it be floppy in your hand. Don't have it pulled like that. Let it flop. And then take your floppy band and just push it in and try not to pull on it at all. Just push it in the notch while it's nice and floppy like so. And just push it in. We're going to start with absolutely zero tension, just a nice floppy tension band. And as we get going, I will show you, you how you pull it to make it the perfect tension every time. This has never failed me. I have spun hundreds and hundreds of grams of yarn on here and I've never had a problem. Here is my hand dyed, hand combed, hand processed Rambouillant. This is just a little sample that I'm spinning up for you today. I lay my shelf liner down so my wheel doesn't slide all over the place. Do a little bit of pre-drafting and thread it through my leader yarn. And now I'm going to show you how we do our tension. See when we turn it on there's zero tension. See it's just twisting up and not pulling on. So what we're going to do is grab the very edge of our tension band and just give it a gentle pull. Did you see the bobbin move? Just a ever so slightly little bit. And as you can see, it still needs a little bit more adjusting. That big knot needs to be hand wound onto the bobbin so that it gets past the wire leaders and doesn't cause a snag. So after that, we're gonna see what we got. Turn it back on and it still isn't taking up quite as much as I want it. So I'm going to give it one more little gentle tug. You can visually see the bobbin move when you pull it. And now we're good to go. In my opinion, there is no better wheel that you can get on the market that will spin this fine. And I'm talking about anything below fingering. Like, look at this. I'm using maybe 10 or 15 hairs of wool and it's able to spin and not pull it out of my hands or break the yarn since the tension system is so gentle. Here is our wraps per inch tool. I love this little tool. It is wonderful. I use it with my other wheel also. We're under 40 wraps per inch. I don't yet have a lace uh, wraps per inch tool but I'm working on getting one. And here it is plied and we're almost right on the money 40 wraps per inch plied with the two ply yarn. So now I'm going to up the tension a little bit and I'm going to show you that you can also spin thicker on this wheel. You don't have to just spin th fine yarn. You can spin a little thicker. I would say up to around worsted weight. I would, I go for more of a DK on this wheel, but I'm sure you could do a worsted. And right there, 
we're right at about a fingering or decay weight. So as you can see, you can spin fingering, decay, just fine, no problem. Since I was playing around with this little bit of fiber, I wanted to see how fine I could actually go. I wasn't going for consistency. I just wanted to see how fine I could go. I've seen some people go down to um, three strands of wool. I'm not that gifted yet, but as you can see, I've just got a few little tiny strands there, and it's pulling them on just fine, and it's adding enough twist that it won't break. My single did not break at all, Then I wanted to check it. I love challenging myself like this, and I absolutely encourage all of you to do so too. Challenge yourself. See how, if you can spin as fine as possible. See if you can spin really thick art yarn. Challenge yourself, because it always will give you more skill. And trying something new is always wonderful. Because who knows, you might find something that could be your new favorite when you challenge yourself and try something new. So I always encourage others to do that. Here's a little tip to help you fill up your bobbin all the way to the end. I usually have my yarn guide right there next to the orifice hole. You can move it like this and just use one of your yarn guides and that will fill up that space right at the edge of the bobbin. And I did want to tell you one more tip. I didn't get video of it in this particular video, but um, I want to encourage you if you have the Nano, if you're having trouble filling up your bobbin at the back, you can switch your yarn over to the other side of your yarn guides, like underneath, because it's on all four sides. Like you have eight different options with your yarn guides, your little wire yarn guides on your flyer. I encourage you to switch them around and switch your yarn around to see which one works the best for what you're using at the time. All right, it is time to ply. I took my flyer off taking my bobbin off and I'm going to use my ball winder to wind this into a center pull ball and we're gonna apply the two ends together I have a homemade lazy cape using just a piece of plastic coat hanger and a shoe box well this is a target box but a shoe box works just fine I'm gonna take the outside yarn and put it on my ball winder this one is from knit picks it has never failed me. I did have to take it apart one time, but I can show you another video on that if you'd like. And I'm just gonna wind it up into a center pull ball so we can take the inside center pull part and we can take the outside part and ply them together using our Nano. I believe there's a misconception that the electric eel wheel nano cannot ply yarn and that is absolutely not true. You can ply yarn on here and as you can see I'm adjusting the tension right here. You can ply yarn on this wheel. I have made some gorgeous three ply yarns and some two ply yarns. I've made plenty of sock yarn, all kinds of yarn I've plied on my nano. I think the main reason why people tell you not to ply on this wheel is because it doesn't have much uptake and that can be a problem if you're trying to ply thicker yarn together and um, having two different plies can cause it to get stuck in the yarn guide since they're wire which you can also get from Etsy like I said before you can get 3D printed ones from Etsy and solve that problem so I've heard and the other big thing to consider is these bobbins only hold about two ounces of fiber at a time. So if you're trying to get 100 grams, that's 3.5 ounces. So you're going to have to use at least one and a half bobbins to get that. And then you have to connect them together after you're done. So that can be a pain. And it is sometimes, I will admit. But if this is the only wheel you can afford and the only wheel that you have you can make it work and I absolutely have made it work and I still love this wheel for fine yarns there's no better and it works great now once your bobbin gets about half full when you're plying you're gonna want to up your tension a little bit at least I do to keep the plying and the feeding on nice and smooth 
and I do it the same way I did before just give the smallest little tug you can the lower the tension on this wheel the better that I feel it works and I think everybody else that I've read will agree with me there you just want to give the tiniest little pull you can and keep the tension as light as possible here's our finished beautiful yarn beautiful pinks and purples and I love the holes on the end of the bobbin you can take your outside yarn and you won't lose it you can tie it in one of the little holes nice and squishy and beautiful well I hope this video has helped some of you maybe with a tension issue or the way you put it together and definitely some pros and cons of if you're wanting to purchase it or not and I hope you enjoyed it please give me a like on this video don't forget check out my other videos follow me on Facebook Instagram and TikTok, and don't forget to subscribe, Rain Fiber Arts. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.